Here is a set of three problems to get you ready for the 2.1 to 2.3 quiz, taking you from the beginning of the chapter, which is looking at the limit definition, moving to being able to recognize that definition, and then the last problem we're going to finish with is talking about writing an equation of a tangent line. So taking you through a lot of the beginning of the chapter. First problem that you're looking at is find the derivative using the limit definition. It will use that wording, which is an indication to you that you cannot use the shortcuts. You can definitely use the shortcuts as a way to check, but you have to show the process using the limits. So you're going to start out by writing your limit as delta x goes to 0. It may help up in the top of your test paper or right up high to write what the limit definition was. The limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. Sometimes it's nice just to have that as a reference as you're working. So what this is going to look like is it's going to take the square root of x plus delta x plus 3 minus the square root of x plus 3 over delta x. I mentioned in class you will definitely have a situation where you're going to be required to rationalize, which is exactly what this is. So you're going to multiply by the conjugate, x plus delta x plus 3 plus the square root of x plus 3 over itself. When you start multiplying the top, you are just multiplying the first and the last, but be careful that you remember to distribute the minus sign. So you're going to get x plus delta x plus 3. Then you're going to subtract x and subtract 3. So you have to distribute that minus sign or you won't negate both. And then you're going to divide it by the delta x that was there and the entire conjugate that you introduced. If things aren't canceling, you know that something went wrong. Usually it's the minus sign that didn't get used. So you're going to cancel your x's, cancel your 3's. You're left with a delta x over a delta x, so those will also cancel. So your numerator is just 1. In the denominator, you're left with the conjugate. You want to make sure that you replace any delta x's with 0, because that is the final step, taking that limit. When you do that, you're going to get a square root of x plus 3 plus a square root of x plus 3 add them together, they're like radicals, giving you 2 square root of x plus 3. You do not need to rationalize it. We're completely fine with leaving radicals in the denominator. And this is your final answer. If you want to use the shortcut that we learned in class in 2.2, this one is a little more complicated because it's actually looking at further uh, techniques where you can kind of do a little bit of power rule, but you really need to know the limit definition for this because this type of level problem, we haven't really got into how to do it with a shortcut. The second problem is kind of a disguise version or the alternate form of the limit definition. So you're going to have a problem in the direction, say, find the limit as h approaches 0 of the sine of x plus h minus the sine of x over h. So looking at what we did last chapter in limits, the first thing you might be tempted to do is put a 0 in for h. When you do that, you're going to get 0 over 0, which is a problem, which is an undefined, it is an indeterminate limit. That's not going to be the way to go. Instead, when you look at this problem, hopefully you look at it and go, wait, this looks familiar. This looks like my limit definition. The only thing that's different about it is all of the, eight, the delta x's have been replaced with h's. So what this essentially is saying is do the limit definition of the derivative, but then you have to figure out what is the function that we're talking about. Now, if you picture your limit definition, kind of write it out for you. You wouldn't have to do all this work to the problem, but it does help to explain it. The actual function that you are deriving is this one. Whatever follows the subtraction is the original function. So my original function in this case must be sine of x. So what this problem is actually asking, but it's kind of disguised, it's, it's very subtle in the way it's asking it, is what is the derivative of the sine of x? You can't do it by hand. We'd have, I haven't taught you any type of method to do this like we did with our polynomials. All I can do is use what, I, what you were taught in the second section of the chapter, which is your basic trig derivative. The derivative of sine is cosine. So the answer to this question, even though it has limits and so much in there, is just cosine of x. Because what this problem is doing, and this is such a common problem on the AP test, they will have this at least one time on every AP, te AP test I've ever seen, will ask a question like this. And students try to do so many difficult things, and it's really just looking at it and going, wait a second, I know what that is. That's just the derivative formula. So what does it want me to derive? And in this case, it just wants you to derive sine. The third and final example in this video 
is not going to apply the limit definition of the derivative. Instead, we're just going to use the shortcuts, the power rules from section 2, 2, and use that to write an equation of a tangent line. When you go to write the equation of the tangent line, you need a slope and you need a point. So first, to get the slope, we need the derivative. So we are not going to do this problem with the x plus delta x definition because it's to the fourth power. I would not make you do that. Instead, we're just going to do power rule. Power out front, power one less. So there is the derivative of my function, 8x to the third minus 7. I want to know the slope at 2, so I want to plug a 2 in, giving me 8 times 2 cubed minus 7. So 8 times 8 is 64 minus 7. We get a pretty large slope, but that will happen a lot of times when you're working with higher degrees because they do become very close to vertical. So we have a slope of 57. Once I have the slope, I now need a point. I know that the x value is 2. I don't know the y value. If that happens, you take your x value, plug it into your original function. You can definitely do it with a calculator. If whenever you're dealing with more difficult numbers, you could even graph it and find where x is. So 2 times 2 to the 4th minus 7 times 2 plus 1. And that's 2 times 16, which is 32, minus 14 plus 1. So 18 plus 1 is 19. So my point is 2 comma 19. And I'm doing this in my head. You could definitely do it in a calculator. And then you're going to use uh, y equals mx plus b, or you could use point slope. So y is 19. Your slope is 57. Your x is 2. And we're looking for your b, your y-intercept. So we've got 104 plus b, or 114, excuse me. Clean that up. 114, subtract 114 from 19, you're going to get negative 95, and that's your b value. And so your equation for your tangent line would be y equals 57x minus 95. And things that you want to double check, make sure that it does indeed it is indeed a linear function. Make sure there's nothing squared in it. Um, make sure if it's a multiple choice question that it wants it in the correct form. For example, this is slope intercept form. It might have wanted it in a standard form, so you might have to manipulate it slightly. But that's what you're going to be asked to do when you're asked to write the equation of a tangent line.